I bet you can't wait to have a real audience again. Absolutely. We're kind of discussing when's best to tour. Um, we'd like to do it by the end of this year, uh, but it's just down to that vaccine, isn't it? But slightly concerning when we look to tour further afield, um, especially in Europe, uh, that's going to be slightly problematic potentially. So it's quite uncertain the future for us, but uh, we're looking forward to getting back as soon as we can. So you're one of those who are saying you, that the Brexit has hurt touring musicians. Is that right? I mean, the reality is we just don't know. But if uh, we are in a position where we need to get visas for more countries than than we're used to, um, and actually also it's it's not as straightforward as just saying that I'll oh, do A, B and C because countries are all going to be different with how we manage them. Um, and for bands of our level, we're very lucky that the, the biggest sort of struggle with that will be the paperwork. But for bands coming through, you know, unsigned bands, for example, a lot of bands just rent a splitter van and drive around Europe. They just won't be able to do that. That will be impossible for them now. So I think, you know, it's it's really worrying for, for the these people are already struggling in the pandemic, you know, not that haven't gigged for a year. They may never be able to tour Europe again. And that's a real concern. Carol, where are you on that? Do you think that this was, shows that Brexit was a mistake? No, I don't. of course not. No, you know, I'm a Brexiteer. But what I think is James is too young to remember that, you know, whenever you left this country, you know, years ago, decades ago, you had to have visas to go almost everywhere. You had to get your passport stamped in various countries. And, and in, in that sense, it's going back to that. It's not going to be hard for, for the bigger bands because they have management to fix all of that before they go. I get what he's saying about the smaller bands, but, you know, it's, I, it's you know, for me, it's kind of, it's kind of, that part is going back to the way it was years ago, where we were very, all of us were very used to just getting yeah. visas. And, and I'm sure even when he goes to America now and places like that, they have to have visas anyway. But that's backpacking if you're on your own. If you're a band, you've got equipment, you've got customs issues. Sarah, you're, you're unconvinced unco by, by Carol there. I'm completely unconvinced by Carol. I've got a lot of friends who work, for instance, as translators, friends who work in small businesses, and they are really worried about the implications. Mm. So, James, uh, the idea that you've got a manager who could do it, that would be all right, wouldn't it? Well, I think what Carol understanding is that the music industry is in no way where it was even 10 years ago look when before we were in the eu people made millions and millions and millions of pounds from selling physical vinyl physical albums that just isn't there anymore we have record companies nowadays signing bands for one song deals so there is absolutely nowhere near the amount of money coming in um, from the old means. So especially with things like streaming uh, and YouTube, the money just isn't there for these new bands to tour. And it will mean that fans in Europe won't be able to do it. And yeah, I am one of the few lucky ones, but the industry is a lot bigger than just, you know, the, the few top bands. It's a, it's a funny one, James, where, and uh, uh, there's no way of me saying this without sounding kind of a bit, I suppose, nationalistic here. But the fact is that we've got the best music in the world. And, and, um, and, and if the deal means we can't play music in 27 other countries, that's their loss. Well, is it? Except that, of course, you can have the best musicians in the world, but if they can't make enough money to survive from this country, and we've just heard from James that's really difficult, they have to go out on tour and they can't do that. But I don't understand why, why if you were in the EU, if you were Brussels, why you would ever contemplate a deal with the, with the UK that meant you couldn't see the Vamps live. Or the Stones. <laughs> or, anyway. We it's should. not just the music industry, though, because you know, the UK trucking industry, that, that could be massively affected because um, if, if we change it where we have to take our own trucks over to the, to the EU, they can only drop off equipment three times before they have to come back to the UK. Really? So the UK trucking companies are not going to want to get involved with touring in the EU. So it's not just the music industry. The music industry is a small part of a much I, bigger I thing know. here. I know, I know. But, the, but the, it's about, you know, musicians like Sting and so on who all sign these letters. OK, well, it's a, it's a, I'm glad you raised it because it's a big issue. I want to see how that shakes down.